we were discussing through four cases of an MRI scan for a fibroid uterus. First patient was in her 40s, suffering from abnormal uterine bleeding. She also had contraction symptoms on the adjacent organ. She was suffering from flatulence, bloating, and constipation. Also had increased frequency of maturation with urgency symptoms. So this is the sagittal view. It's a T2 sequence. So we can see that the uterus is right at the top with a very small fibroid. This is possibly intended in the patient. But that's the big fibroid which is occupying the whole of the pelvis and the small part of the abdomen. It's reaching up to the level of umbilicus. There's hardly any space between the fibroid and the spine. So the size of the fibroid is around 17 by 11 centimeters. And fibroid is typically appearing as hyperintense on the scan with minimum areas of degeneration. This is the coronal view which shows the uterus is at the top and that's the entire fibroid with some areas of degeneration inside. And it is so wide that it's occupying the entire diameter of the pelvis. So such patients are also more prone to have compression on the ureter and the back pressure changes on the kidney leading to compromised kidney function and at times, if not treated, can lead to recurrent infections and also kidney failure. So you can see this fibroid has got very few areas of degeneration in between in the center. So the vascularity of the fibroid is more in the false capsule, which is in the periphery. So the blood supply in the center is less, and that's the area which is more prone to have degeneration. There's nothing suspicious on the MRI that we can see that makes it look like pre-cancer, cancer, or a sarcoma. The commonest degenerations that can happen in the fibroid is the hyaline degeneration and the cystic degeneration. So the, the uterus per se, you can see the cavity is compromised So we move on to the MRI scan for a second patient. So this was a patient who was in her 30s, had a um, couple of miscarriages before. And apart from that, she had the routine symptoms of fibroid, which was the abnormal uterine bleeding and the compression symptoms on the bladder. So this is the uh, T2 sequence sagittal view. And we're going to move from the left to the right of this patient. So as we do that, we can see that there is a bladder in the front, which is being compressed by this fibroid. And the cervix is well seen with the endocervical cavity and multiple nabotrian follicles. When we track the endometrial cavity, it goes posterior and you can see a very well circumscribed encapsulated large fibroid occupying the anterior part of the womb, which is interstitial to intramural location. This fibroid appears a bit more hyperintense as compared to the typical appearance of fibroid that we should see on the MRI scan. This is all because of a lot of degenerative changes that has happened in this fibroid. This is looking at a different image of the same fibroid. And as we move from the back to the front of the patient, we see first the cavity of the womb as this fibroid is more lying anteriorly. So we see the uterus with the cavity being compressed by a very large fibroid, which was occupying the entire pelvis. This fibroid has undergone a lot of degeneration. So the plan for this is we're going to do a laparoscopic myonectomy, and um, we 
course, without saying that we will be mosellating this fibroid in a bag so as to prevent any dispersion of the fibroid fragments. We're going to get a lot of fluid which will come out of this fibroid when we will mosellate. Now we move on to the um, third patient. So um, this is the patient who was in the 40s, um, uh, typical symptoms of the um, fibroid. In addition to that, she suffered from recurrent urinary infections. A um, couple of times she was admitted to the hospital um, with sepsis and um, was treated with antibiotics for a period of two weeks to clear out the urinary infection. She kept on having heavy and abnormal um, bleeding. And as, as you can see, that this is the sagittal view. And you can see the cervix with the endocervical cavity and splenic burkin cyst. And then the cavity here in this case is lying anteriorly. And the fibroid location is more of fundal and posterior, which is in turn within the patient. This fibroid has some areas of degeneration inside, but not as what we saw in the previous case. So all the fibroids that we have seen today and we have described, they're all measuring around 10 centimeters and it can be easily performed and removed through a laparoscopic surgery with the proper planning and having a team that deals with this sort of a surgery. So that's the actual view which shows the cavity of the uterus which is compressed by a very large fibroid with some areas of degeneration inside. So ultrasound is the first step and the diagnostic tool. There are times when the fibroid has a lot of degenerative changes or if there are multiple fibroids or if they've undergone degeneration, MRI is superior in those cases. So now we move on to the last case where this patient was on perimenopausal, had a lot of bleeding issues. In fact, she bled more than a couple of weeks every month and was referred to us for management of the fibroid uterus. We did ultrasound scans first, but then we performed an MRI scan and we do that for every case, if at all, we are listing them for a surgery as most of the cases we perform laparoscopy, and if you're doing a mosellation, we ideally have an MRI scan three to six months beforehand. So this is the large fibroid uterus, and there's a solitary fibroid, which is occupying the fundal and the posterior part of the uterus. I think that's the endocervical cavity, and the fluid inside is seen as white, that goes all the way when we track it upwards to the endometrial cavity. So we don't see any suspicious findings. We see some areas of degeneration um, and this can be easily managed laparoscopically. So in short, MRI scan is a very useful investigation for a large size fibroids and if you are performing a myomectomy procedure, which is through keyhole, it is essential to have an MRI scan to rule out any suspicious findings before. MRI also helps us to map the fibroid, and we can discuss with patients about how we're going to plan out the surgery. Thank you for watching.